Okay. Well, I wasn't expecting to be first up, but uh, at least it means after I've given my talk, I can relax. Let me just start the timer. Right, so I have 10 minutes <clears throat> to talk about Lunar Mission 1. So who's heard about Lunar Mission 1? Okay, about 40% of you, so that's good. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Remco has heard a little bit about it. Um, so, a lo new lunar mission for everyone. Let me see how I get the slides to go forward. Where do I point the uh, control? Is it on? Engage your glasses. Or do I do that old school thing going, next slide, please? <laughs> ah, here we go. So what is Lunar Mission 1? An international robotic mission to the south pole of the moon. It's a scientific-led mission, but it's intended to be funded publicly, and that's, that's the key thing about it. Um, it's exploring a, a new approach to funding, uh, funding science missions. Uh, later on, it may do, uh, may do other things. Uh, there might be a kind of Lunar Mission 2, might even be a Lunar Mission 3 involving humans, but for the time being, Lunar Mission 1. Um, and the two parts to it is you go to the moon, you drill a deep hole for scientific purposes, you extract the core, you analyze them, and then you have a deep hole at the south pole of the moon, where it's very cold, very stable, and into that you put a digital archive uh, and also some snips of DNA belonging to people who have paid for the privilege. Uh, and, and that's how, in principle, the, the mission is, is going to be funded. Next slide, please. I haven't had to say that in years. So it's, a, it's an independent uh, project. It's not connected with any governments, although it originated in the UK. Uh, the idea, but it's very much intended to be international, so you can consider this to be part of Lunar Missions 1 international outreach program. I think this is the, probably the, you know, the, one of the first presentations uh, about it outside, outside of the UK. Um, so, next slide. I have to remember, I only have 10 minutes. So, the idea is, uh, here's a concept for the lander. This was developed by the Rutherford and Appleton Labs uh, in the UK. That's one of the government research labs. We do this. Uh, a lander, conceptually like this, will, will fly to the moon. It will have this drill, which will drill down somewhere between 20 to 100 meters, which is very, very deep, uh, you know, in comparison to any other drilling we've done on any other body, uh, and, and extract the core. Um, next slide, please. So this is, oh, back up one. Yeah, science. So this is it, lunar geology, 20 to 100 meters deep. Oh, okay. Oh, right, okay, I have control, right. Okay, um, and also potentially do some uh, radio astronomy uh, because uh, the, uh, a lot of the time the Earth won't be, won't be visible there. The cores won't be brought back, okay? The mission doesn't include that, but if there's a follow-on mission, then the, a follow-on mission would pick up uh, part of the lunar cores uh, and, and bring them back to Earth as a sample return. This is uh, a sort of uh, idea of the data archive, so you would have, using technology that's yet to be determined, uh, because you know, the mission's got to, a way to run, but you can see these yellow rods represent the archive pods, which would then be fed down the hole uh, and, and effectively buried there um, and be preserved for anywhere from 100 million to a billion years, uh, depending on what's happened. So it could quite easily, you know, outexist, uh, uh, outlast human civilization. Uh, and uh, again, the key point is the mission will only go forward if enough people around the world actually pay for this. Uh, uh, according to the market survey that Lunar Mission 1 conducted, there will be people who are, who are prepared to pay for this. Not so much for themselves. The interesting thing is it seems to be more of a gifting thing. It's the sort of thing you buy for someone else, you know, for your, for your beloved. You say, you know, sweetheart, you know, as it's Valentine's Day, you know, I've sent a lock of your hair and pictures of you to be buried in a deep, dark hole on the moon. <laughs> it's kind of romantic in a kind of space geek way. Um, the other thing is it's intended to have a big education aspect. Uh, the purpose for the money that's going to be raised um, is that it will not only pay for the mission, but it will pay for a vast amount of space education and outreach uh, as well. Um, uh, I can explain what the BBC doomsday model means. That sounds a bit 
apocalyptic. It, it isn't. It's a reference to, a, to when the French invaded Britain uh, you know, back in 1066. There was a thing called the Doomsday Book, which was a bit like a kind of national audit of everything that they'd, that they'd conquered. So it's a sort of record. Uh, and there, there was a sort of the, the, the BBC, our national broadcasters, recapitulated this in digital form about 20 years ago and created this digital archive of the United Kingdom. And so the idea is that there would be a digital archive of the world, which would also be in there, uh, as well as all the personal information. Let me look at my clock halfway through. Right, so this is the, this is the, 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 the funding. Um, and they're expecting, you know, 50 to $500 a, as a typical price, depending on how much digital storage you want, uh, you know, how many locks of hair you want to send. Uh, so $1.5 billion for the space project and the, the public engagement. Uh, and according to the business people, of which I am not one, okay, the projected revenue would be billions. And as I've already said, all the surplus would go to a non-profit trust. There was a, a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, at the end of last year, uh, you, can see, uh, you can see the slide there, it raised £672,447 uh, from 7,297 backers. Uh, any Lunar Mission 1 backers in the room? Oh, that's not bad. Okay, that's good. Um, so congratulations, you are founder backers. Uh, if you've been following the Kickstarter forum, you'll know that this money is now being used to put in place the, uh, the, the, you know, the first website, the first community forums, because they want to get a lot of world, global community engagement in this. So we're, we're currently in the, uh, in the six-month uh, preparatory state phase. You can see we've got a nice oh, laser pod is not working, but if you can't read, that says Stephen Hawking, okay? Everyone's heard of Stephen Hawking, I take it. Lunar mission. They, they, when I got these slides from the UK, there were a whole bunch of other people being quoted. I thought, but if you're not British, you won't know who they were. But I thought, everybody will know who Stephen Hawking is. Is bringing space exploration to all of us, an exciting scientific endeavor. So uh, that's the thing. It's a science-led mission, um, but uh, funded by public donation, effectively. So here's the program. We're at the, uh, the top part at the moment, the sixth month preparation of the management team. Um, Remco probably knows more about that than I do. I don't know. Remco is very uh, heavily involved in the, in, the, in the social media and outreach. So, uh, you know, if you want to know questions about some of the nitty gritty about that, Remco is your man. Um, uh, then we go into the three month uh, stage, uh, placing the main contracts. Lunar Mission 1 is not going to build the spacecraft themselves. They're going to place contracts with, you know, existing, uh, you know, space, space entities to do that. Uh, while setting up the, the other aspects. Uh, and then we go into the six-year main development period, ultimately go to the moon, operate there for six months, uh, and hopefully on success, when we can see it's going to be a success, then there'll be a, a second mission to, uh, to bring some of the samples back. These are some of the people uh, involved, the mission team, science team, education team. Uh, Predominantly at the moment, as I say, UK, but one of the reasons I'm here is, as I say, to, to, to spread the words uh, because it's essential if this project is going to go forward that it isn't seen as, as a British project, okay? The, the initial idea, okay, came out of Britain, but it's very much seen by the team as, as a global project and, and Lunar Mission 1 is you know, actively trying to bring a, a more international community. So if you're interested in being uh, you know, involved or getting your organisations involved, uh, you know, see me afterwards and I'll put you in touch with the relevant people. Uh, my prime involvement is through the education aspect, uh, ISU's uh, part of the education team. Um, so, I think that's pretty much what we said. We're setting up the management consortium. Uh, there'll be an e-commerce platform. We've got to have these things these days. We're going to sell these digital, digital kind of... Uh, memory boxes on the moon, you've got a way to do that. The Lunar Missions Club is, is, is in the process of being formed. All of those who put their hands up just now as original founders will become part of the Lunar Missions Club. So go us. Well, I don't know if we'll have a secret pin or a t-shirt or, you know, maybe a handshake. Uh, yeah. uh, and then more people will be, uh, will be brought on board. Um, so uh, that's it. Uh, oh, that's not bad. Did it with 50 seconds to spare. So uh, if you want to know more, go to the Lunar Mission 1 website, follow Lunar Mission 1 on, on Twitter. Um, and if you've got any questions, I'll be very happy to answer them. Thank you. Well, thank you, Chris. Um, I think we have time for one, two questions. So raise your arm and I.
get you the, uh, the mic. Anyone? I'm wondering why you picked the moon to put that digital archive on. I think it's pretty well known that long before the sun will swallow the earth, the moon is supposed to drift away from us, so I can just imagine some aliens finding the moon floating around somewhere with you know, some civilization parts in it where nobody knows where it belongs to. Well, it, it's, a, it's a combination of, of the two things. I mean, the, the, the idea for Lunar Mission 1 came out of a conversation that the founder, David Iron, was having with uh, somebody who was then the, the leader of one of the scientific research councils in the United Kingdom about how could you fund future space science missions. It, it was very much from that point of view. And where could we go? What sort of science could we do? And what, if you like, funding opportunities were they related? So from the science point of view, you know, this particular community wants to go to the moon and wants to drill deep down to do the science. The question then is, how do you fund that? And that's really the kind of genesis of it. Um, there may be other approaches. I mean, suppose one wanted to do a mission to Venus, you know, you, then one would then have to work out what could you, you know, how could you make that attractive to people putting, you know, money into it. You know, could they put their name on a piece of paper and have it in a balloon floating in the... Uh, in Venus atmosphere or something. What, what, what will people be interested enough? Now here, since the scientific aspect was to drill a deep hole to take core samples, the question then was, how could you use this deep, deep hole? Uh, and that, that's why this approach has been taken, but it's very specific for this particular science mission. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do you plan to open the shareholding structure for uh, ordinary Venture capital funds, Ooh, or uh, keep uh, Kickstarter uh, only? Uh, the Kickstarter bit is funding only the startup phase, the first six months. There's got to be lots more money. I'm not a finance guy. Okay, the, David Iron, the founder, I mean, he's a, he's a space finance guy, a public-private uh, partnership, uh, did stuff on, 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 on Galileo and Skynet. So if you had a question about that, I would just say, I'll get, I'll get your details, put you in touch with David, and he will be able to answer those questions. Um, I think we have to continue. Thank you, Chris. Okay, thank Hope you very much. Appreciate.